Have you ever been in a situation where you have a certain workflow in your business and then you're trying to put in the confluence and then it's completely messed out? Let's say you need approval for somebody external or you don't want anybody to see your documents when it's a draft and you're like, how do I do that? And everybody could see your documents. Have you ever had a situation where you have structured your confluence very, very well and then your team comes and they start putting things in different places and it becomes a complete mess, then there's no control? Today, we're going to fix all of this, so let's go. Hey guys, welcome to Financial. This is Anatoly. Today, we're going to review an amazing app. It's called Workflows for Confluence. It is made by the company called AppFox and they're sponsoring this video. Huge thank you to them. I'm going to show you the app. It is probably one of the best apps I've seen for Confluence. It allows you to solve a bunch of problems. Let's jump right into it. Let me show you how to get the app. You go to the apps. You go to find new apps. You go to workflows for Confluence. And here you go. Let me show you this in a marketplace to explain a little bit more. Here's the app in the marketplace. It has 886 installs. It is cloud security participant, which is great. It means it takes security very, very seriously. There's a free trial for 30 days. You can try it for free. I'm going to talk about pricing in a second. And then uh, they have a bunch of tutorials how to use it. It is very similar to Jira, but actually I find it actually easier to use. So let's talk about pricing. For 10 users, it is free. If you have a bigger team of, let's say, 50 users, it's just $1 per user. And it can help you save you lots of time and lots of headache redoing things. So $50 a month, it literally pays itself very, very quickly. So I already set up a free trial. Let me show you how it works. Let's set up an easy workflow and see how we can use it. I am back at my Confluence page. Uh, if you set up the app to see if it's there or not, you can click on any page you want. And then it says apply workflow. And then you can click apply workflow. For you, this will be empty. So you won't have any workflow when you apply. Let me show you how to create workflows, how to scaffold the default workflow they have as well. So for that, you click on the wheel, Confluence Administration. And here you have workflows for Confluence on the left side. We're going to look at workflows and configuration today. Let's first start with just workflows. I'll click on it. So here we are. For you, if you do it first time, it's going to be completely empty. But if you click generate default, it will generate you default workflows that you can reuse right away. And they are pretty cool. Uh, they take care of, let's say, content expiry, restrictions, approvals, etc. I've created one for testing, but let's create another one just for you right now. So I click on create. I'll give it a name. Agile Workflow. I'll click Create. And here it shows us Workflow Configurator. Here we have multiple things. We have Trigger, we have Logic, and we have Actions. Very simple to what Jira does. Um, so let's create a simple work workflow. So we have a Trigger Start. And then let's say we want to have a draft first. We're working on a draft. For that, we need a page status. And then we can change the name of page status to the draft. The next one is we want approval stage. So once our draft is done, we have approval stage. And for this approval stage, we have two more statuses. One status is approved. Another status is not approved. Here we go, this is our basic template. So now, what do we wanna do? What actions we want it to be taken once it moves from one to another? So, let's say we start and we have a draft. So for draft, we want it not to be visible to anybody except for the person who created it. This we can do with set page restrictions. So we put set page restrictions action right here. We need to put it before the status. So before any logic, we put action. First action, then logic. Then here we can, as soon as you click on it, you see a bunch of configurations, users who can edit, groups who can edit, users who can view. So we can change all of this, let's say users who can edit. I'll put myself and then um, groups I don't want and users who can view, I put myself as well. 
You can also do page creator, can view and edit. That means that anybody who creates can view and edit and other ones cannot. If you don't want anybody else, you can just leave those empty or you can put your name if it's just you, let's say. Uh, so I'll leave it like this for now. Then the another thing I want to do, I want one, once it is approved, when it is approved, I want to remove all restrictions so anybody can see it. So I take another set page restrictions, I put it before the approved action, and then here I just say remove all permissions. And that's it. So now when permissions are removed, then everybody can view and edit. So this is very, very easy. The other thing you want to do, let's say, when it is approved, they want to put a label on it. So I'll just move a label and I say add label to a page called approved. And this is it. The other thing we can do, we can click on approved and we can say if somebody edits the approved page, we can send it back to its initial status, which means it would go back to the draft and we'll set page restrictions again. See how easy it is to do with one change when it somebody edits approved we are going back to it same as we can do with not approved if it's not approved we still transition it to initial status now another thing you want, might want to do when it's on draft remove any labels as well so we can just say label uh, we can remove certain labels from a page let's say add labels or remove or i can remove all labels so i can just put it here Let's move it all down. Now here are some other cool actions that we really like. First of all, email. Uh, Confluence does send email, but if you want to send email to some external body who needs approval, let's say approve this, then you can just put uh, their emails here and it will send it to them. You can also add variables to this email so it will use automatically the information from Confluence page. I'll leave the documentation for emails in the description as well so you guys can check it out. Um, I'll remove it for now. And another cool one is Slack message. If you are in Slack and you really want uh, it to, let's say, send Slack message, something is approved or something is draft, this can be done as well. Add comment is really cool. Another one is cool that's called publish content. So in many companies that I've seen, they have a draft space when they do all the drafting and they have actual space where all the production stuff goes. So publish content allows you, once it is approved, you can move everything for draft to the production and you don't have to do it manually. So you'll save yourself a bunch of time. Modify title is cool if you have certain uh, style of title for draft. Let's say everything's in draft, you put draft dash. I've seen that done before. So this can also change your title and that's gonna be it. But for now, let's keep it really, really simple. I'll show you how it works, how we can apply it manually, how we can apply it automatically. From here, all you have to do is just connect them together. So let's do that. See, approval stage has one green and one red. Another thing before we go in approval stage, you can click on approval stage and then you can click on approval and you can add approvers. So let's say I'm a product owner here and I will be approving all of this so it knows I am the approver. And there are a lot of other things you can do here. There's lots and lots and lots. The one thing you can also do, you can change the colors because it will be shown on your Confluence page as a status. So if I want to change the color of draft, let's say I put it orange, and then let's say approved, I put green, and not approved, I put red. So it's easy to see. So here I save my workflow. An agile workflow is saved. All I need to do now is enable. And let me go and show you how it works. I'll manually apply this workflow to a new page. So I'm gonna go back to my Confluence space. I'm gonna create a new page, Agile Workflow. I'll just publish it. So now it's available to anybody. I click Publish. So here's a few things I want you to see right now. If I click on restrictions, there's no restrictions at all. So it doesn't know it is a draft. It just published it. If, um, and there's apply workflow, so workflow is not applied yet. I'll show you how to automatically apply workflow to your space, but let's do it manually first. Let's click apply workflow. Here we click apply workflow again. And this was my old one, agile workflow. This one we created, I click apply. Now a few things happened right away. First thing you see, it's a draft right now. 
and a second you see the restrictions are applied so it's only me who can edit and view so then I go and let's say I finish with my draft and I want to transition to approval stage. See, it's very, very intuitive. I click to transition to approval stage. So now it says approval stage. It will notify me that I need to approve. If it's somebody outside, again, you can send an email, but I'm in the Confluence anyway, so let me click on approval stage now. So now it says approval, pending, and I can say yes or no. So let us say no. And then I can enter comment. This is missing information. And I click reject. So as you see, it says not approved. And you see it has restrictions applied still. So only me can edit. Let me click on not approved again. Here I can view my comment right away. So it's rejected. Very, very easy to use. Let's say I'm editing this page now. More info. I publish it. And if you refresh your page, you'll see that it is draft again. Automatically, it went to draft. I didn't do anything else. So here we go. Once you edit, it goes back to draft. Restrictions are set again. So now let's quickly go through it again and approve it. So I click from draft to approval stage. I click on approval stage. And this time, I'm happy with it. Approve, great work, approve. So now we see it is approved and I have a label approved document. So it's very, very intuitive. I guess if I had to say well, the only thing that I think that, and they, I'm sure they'll improve it, is once you go through this, it refreshes the page. I don't know if that can be improved with just Confluence, but the page keep on refreshing. But happening very, very quickly anyway. And the time it saves me to add labels, to do all those kind of things, to move documents, to send emails, it's completely worth it anyway. So let me show you how to apply those workflows on scale. Let's say if you have a space, how would you do that? Or if you have certain subset of pages, you want to do it. Let me show you how to do it. Let's click on the wheel again. We go to configuration. Here we are, global settings. Here you can enable or disable those workflows globally. One thing I really like to set up a default workflow for all newly created pages. So you can select it here, you save. It'll take a bit of time and then um, it should work. So then the another one is permissions. Here you can select who can remove, add workflows, add approvers. So all kinds of things you can select here, whether you have specific groups or users. Auto assign. So for newly created pages, if you want to create a mapping, which is uses CQL, you can say for all newly created pages that match the name of the space, match, let's say, agile, then you can apply a workflow. And you can apply a workflow this way. If you have existing pages, so then you can use bulk change. So you can go and say for all the existing ones, again, you can apply. It takes some time for a bigger one. So just uh, execute it, wait a little bit, and then we'll apply for all of them. And then there's credentials and access. You can check it out by yourself. The most important ones are bulk change, auto assign, and global settings. So those three things would allow you to take care of your new ones and also to change your existing ones. Guys, I hope it helps. Please put a comment if you have any questions down below. I really appreciate AppFox for sponsoring this video. I really enjoyed this product and it's getting better and better. So please stay tuned. If you have any questions, let me know. I'll talk to you next one. Bye-bye.